I wanted to share with you the two bows that I hunted with this past season. Uh, the first bow was actually like the first levitate that came uh, from the production floor. There were actually two, this one and a black one. Um, but I started shooting this one in late July and then shot it almost until the very first production levitate came out. And that's when I switched over to this one. So um, with that first bow, uh, it was right at about 76 pounds, I believe, is where it came in at first. Um, normally for hunting, I like to hunt normally 75 to 80 pounds. It's not a weight that I like to shoot all year. It's not a weight that I like to train with, uh, but it is definitely a weight that I like to hunt with. Um, and in the past, I had always just raised the weight of my arrow to keep my arrow in a speed range that allowed me to still shoot an arrow that I felt was stable. Um, but in the last several years, um, my bows have just been faster than ones that I had shot in the past. So I actually just kind of threw the, I'm going to shoot as heavy of an arrow as I can to keep my bow at 280. I kind of threw that out of the window and just said, I'm really happy with this arrow that I've been shooting for a long time. And listen, I know we can talk for days about arrows and you know whether you're looking at momentum or whether you're looking at ke and whether you believe in extreme foc or you know you are a person honestly like me that shot hundreds of animals with you know 10 or 12 percent foc before then bumping my foc up a little bit more not crazy but a little bit more and then just doing that for another two decades. So I really feel like the arrow that I have right now, which is, I believe, right at about 529 or 539 grains, if, if I'm correct. Um, I go with a max stealth vein. I had a lighted knock. And then from there, I shot 50 grains of brass in the front with a 100 grain head. Now throughout the year, I shot a lot of different broadheads. Um, I honestly used this year to shoot tons and, and just do some experimenting. I wasn't public with the experimenting, but it was very interesting seeing people's feedback on several of the hunts where they assumed penetration or what they saw on camera to be penetration was due to a certain broadhead when in fact it was actually a completely different broadhead that everyone said was awesome which was kind of fun um, but i've really made it a point always with my hunting gear to not talk about what other products don't do but talk about what pro what the products i choose do this arrow combination and there's really been two of them with not a lot not a lot of difference but for me this match grade axis, which is the best axis Easton can put out of the factory, um, with 50 grains of brass in a 300 spine arrow, for me, has just been dynamite. I've tried 75s, I've tried going up in spines to a stiffer spine, but the truth is this 300 with 50 grains of brass and really whatever the heck broadhead I want to shoot has never underperformed for me. Um, it's always treated me really well. Now, if you're a low poundage shooter, or if you're a very short draw length shooter that's shooting moderate weight, well, my opinion on kind of being able to shoot whatever I want is very different than yours because you might be much better off if you're worried about penetration uh, to go to, an, to a spine where you can put the 75 grains of brass in the front, have a little bit more FOC carrying you forward, but also having that arrow that's a little bit slower, more stable, and then you're able to, to put a fixed blade broadhead on the front so that you can also be cutting upon impact versus not really worrying about impact hut, cut and really just going for straight devastation. Now on this first one, 
it was uh, a very comfortable scale. I shot the Spot Hog Fast Eddy NE that we have, and I shot the two pin uh, housing. A lot of people ask five pin or two pin. I shot the two pin, and the reason being is in the past when I was very focused on only shooting a bow that shot 280, I recognized that a two pin setup wasn't giving me a lot of comfort from one pin to the next because the variation in yardage between those pins, it was so high that trying to use gapping on the fly with two pins, did just didn't work for me. So I shot a multi-pin housing that I could either a four or a five that I could then gang adjust for longer distances. So once I had this faster bow and my sight scale is now much tighter. My top pin on this setup was at 20 yards. My, my second pin was at, well, 39 and a half yards. So I had a 20 perfect gap for a 30, 40 dead on, and I had a great system so that I was totally comfortable with that two pin. Now, again, I did use the Elevate Rest. I really like that rest. I use it, I really use both the rests that we offer uh, equally. And this past year, you saw me try a lot of stuff throughout the year, and now we've actually brought them forward. Um, other than that, that was my first bow that really got me all the way through uh, everything up to elk. And, you know, I believe three elk were shot not a problem. Everything was as expected. Now once, and for a release, I altered between, sometimes I shot a silverback, sometimes I shot a knock to it on this setup. Now once I came home for the whitetail season, and by that I mean once I kind of settle in uh, for whitetails, I really just focus on whitetail rut. I'm not going to hunt big game because I'm totally in whitetail mode. So for the whitetail season, I went with this bow that was a little bit more poundage, crazily enough. Um, it was an 80 pounder that came in actually at 80 versus this was actually an 80 but came in at mid 70s uh, before the production limbs were done. So I shot 80 pounds and really by then I would worked myself up to where I could draw back this bow sitting down in blinds you know, throughout the season, not a problem. Could shoot sitting on my butt. So once it came to being in a tree stand or a blind, I was totally comfortable with that. And I also like really big cuts for whitetails because they're medium size. So because of that, I wanted the power too, just so that distance really wouldn't matter. Um, so for this bow, I set it up quite a bit different than that one. Um, I went with the production QAD that's now available. We have a QAD rest. And the reason I really focused on that for this last year was once I knew that my goal was to come out with the most ultimate high-end bow ever made, and I knew that the weight and the feel was a big part of that, um, for me, putting that rest on there just helped keep the weight down minimally, um, but also just gave a little bit different um, option. It was very containment oriented. Flip the rest up, my arrows contain, I can have my, my bow in the corner of the blind or in a tree stand, and I was totally good to go, didn't even have to look at it. Um, now I did switch to a UV uh, scope for my last hunt. I had a standard spot hog for the beginning, which again, I still like both. Uh, once it went to later in the season, I actually just preferred the electronics of the UV. Um, so I put that on because my later season stuff is always very ground blind oriented or things are moving at very last light. So having that better option for my sight housing was important to me. Um, and then I also switched over to the back strap release uh, just to really just to show everybody that you can, all the releases work great. Um, I actually get more worked up for whitetails than almost anything I hunt out west. So I kind of like the mental attention that I have to put into switching over to that back strap to just really focus on my anchor, 
looking in the peep, squeezing that trigger, you know, and taking that safety off, and then just really just not looking at the rack, which I always do the most on whitetails. Uh, I think it's because it's closer to the kill zone too, um, and you're elevated most of the time, but the back strap was awesome. I finished last season with it, and I wanted to finish this season with it too, because for me, coming off a long hunting season where I'm not able to practice a lot, I do start to pick up naughty habits. So I kind of make it a point to say, all right, finish the year with perfect shots. And the last two whitetails that I shot, I remember specifically a buddy of mine asked me about them and I just said, I didn't realize it at the time, but he kind of told me afterwards, you realize that when I asked you, how was your hunt? It's like, you spent more time telling me how perfect these shots were and how good they felt. But that's the truth. I was focused on just ending the year with, with great shots so that I could go into my training season with that mentality, not having any type of, you know, a little bit rushed to make that shot happen when my lane's there or when that buck's coming by on the doe. I just really focused on the back strap, taking the safety off, pull, 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 and just had perfect shots. Um, and then one of the things that I do too towards the end of the year is I do switch over to a full metal jacket. I went up in poundage, but I went to a full metal jacket to actually give myself even a little bit more weight. And because arrow weight, and because I went up in the poundage with the bow, um, the arrow weight went up with that. So my speed still stayed about the same, um, but I did have to use that extra weight in order to make up for the extra weight that's in a full metal jacket versus what's in an axis. So I had an awesome, awesome year. I've I don't think I've ever had a better big game season than this past one. And from August until December, uh, both of these bows and these setups were 100% uh, the most dependable setups I've ever had. Um, I think every Western tag uh, was filled. And then honestly, I didn't even hunt for the late season with my late season Iowa tag because I was so content after the whitetail bucks that I was able to get in November and December. So these things were awesome. If you're looking for great setups and if you're one of those people that always just zoom in on, on the pics that we post and you wonder why, well, that's the long wind version of it right there.